Hey everyone, how's it going today? Kathleen here. Um, for today's event, I wanted to call this validation and meditation because, and I just want to make sure I'm alive here. Okay, it's be hesitating. So if you miss that, I'm Kathleen, Ma Kathleen Carol Mason. I was going to say Kathleen Mason, but thanks for tuning in. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to call this event today Validation and Meditation because the biggest thing that comes up after a relationship with a narcissist initially is needing validation. You know, and I hear this all the time and I understand what it's like because the narcissist has really bamboozled us to use a long <laughs> term that's probably not in the dictionary, right? The whole manipulation, the whole um, gaslighting, you know, the whole point of gaslighting is to make us feel like we're crazy and they're perfectly sane. So it's so manipulative and insidious that after a while we just feel like Maybe we're crazy. Maybe we're imagining things. And of course, it makes it easier for them to kind of try to draw us back in, you know, because they like to do that because they don't like being alone. So then they want to have people to draw from. Maybe, um, you know, they're with somebody else and they're pretending they're not. And, you know, that's another thing I want to say is, when they come back and they're being all sweet and, oh, I really miss you and everything, this has happened to me, and come to find out, you realize later that they were with somebody else and saying the exact same thing. So I want to tell you that a lot of times that's just not even true. I mean, of course, it's not true because they're pathological liars. Now, I'm not here to even bash narcissists. I'm here to help validate the feelings that you're experiencing, the all the thoughts and the emotions that make you question yourself and you know how we can end up getting drawn back into that toxic relationship where we can just get abused all over again. Um, we like to think that others are as honest as we are, you know, even when uh, when they tell us how amazing we are and how much they miss us, um, do they really miss us or do they just miss somebody they can use or manipulate or lie to? I think it's the latter. Um, so we just have to understand who they are and when we recognize that, no, this isn't normal. You know, they're not telling the truth when they say how amazing, not that we aren't amazing, of course we're amazing, but they're just saying whatever they can come up with to try and win us over so they can feel better about themselves. Um, and as I've said before, I've been taking notes on things. Um, you know, affirmations, here's something that I had heard somebody say, affirmations that what I experienced is not normal for loving relationships. And especially those of us, by the way, who grew up, which pretty much is all of us, grew up with some sort of trauma somewhere. This is why also we don't recognize how abnormal their behavior is, especially those of you who had parents who are narcissists. Now, I had an alcoholic situation in my family, so it wasn't narcissist per se, but there was definitely trauma there. And so then we think trauma is kind of normal. Um, we don't consciously think that way, but it's like we get drawn into it. Um, so no, it's not normal. Uh, I want to say to the person who asked this question, is it normal for loving relationships? And no. Um, so let's see what other ones came up. Saying to myself, yes, he did that too. And then when he said that also, I still have troubles believing 
that this really happened to me and the love was fake. Um, it's because it's so different from who we are. You know, we just, again, we think others are honest. And our, others are kind. Others are loving. And... And then we realize that's not really the case because and it's because they they have so much damage and trauma within themselves and they're trying to say anything and do anything to help feel better um so as empaths as sensitive people we get drawn in we believe everything they're telling us and they don't even know what's true I think themselves I don't think they even know they're probably way confused within themselves but you know I used to think do they all go f to school for narcissistic abuse because it just seems to be so well crafted but I, it's just the process that they go through to try and make themselves feel better and to cover up their own trauma um Deceit and cruel lies. I'm just throwing words out here that I am validating. Um, staying away without feeling depressed. I should say staying away for good without feeling depressed. And when we feel depressed, it's anger. So recognize that depression is anger. We feel anger, but it's like we're holding it in because, you know, we can't. Maybe we're going no contact and we can't talk to the narcissist. And so we just kind of like hold it in. We repress that anger. So how can you express that anger and let it out? Is there someone that you can just talk to? Even your cat. It doesn't matter. Just talk. Get it out. Because we don't want to hold that anger in. You know, anybody who can understand. And just being a sounding board, because that's all you really need. Uh, although it's nice if they shake their head and go, yes, that's terrible, because if they tell you you're crazy, then that's not good. Um, childhood unresolved grief. Yes. That's something I work with with women, is we, we can't just heal this initial trauma. So tomorrow, by the way, Hopefully you've signed up for the Trauma Bond Healing event. And I had a question here asking what time you were thinking of joining us. I don't know what time zone everyone is in. Because um, I had planned on two times, 11 Pacific or 6 p.m. Pacific, so that, you know, people who are in different time zones could make it. Um, but that that event is to kind of help with that beginning of breaking that bond really tapping into our power and visualization to imagine breaking free from that bond now the healing begins right because it's awesome that someone's comment was about their childhood trauma and recognizing that which is the first step because then we need to go beyond that and do that other healing work because otherwise we run the risk of going through this cycle over and over and over again my second divorce um with a narcissist was at the age of 57. <laughs> i'm in my 60s now but um you know you get to a point where you're like enough is enough how many times am i going to go through this cycle again I must be missing something. So that's what I help women do is to go deep and work through these things so that we don't keep having repeating patterns. So I hope you're joining me tomorrow for that, at least the initial part. And then, you know, I've got suggestions uh, for healing further. Um breaking the bond, being free from the bond. I'm just making a note based on the comments I got here. Um, not being able to trust. I see fear a lot and I want to validate that fear. 
you know, they they create all this anxiety in us, anxiety, anxiety and fear, and it plays together. It's like anxiety often comes from worrying about the future and wondering what's going to happen next. You know, it's all very unstable. We don't know what they're going to say, what they're going to do, the temper tantrum, the lies, the cheating, the whatever. So we end up feeling this anxiety and fear. And I see women who they try to join the group and they're afraid, I think, to even answer questions. And then their profile is totally private, which I, some, you know, I can understand. It's like they're afraid to be seen. They're afraid that the narcissist is going to see them, see that they've joined a group about narcissists. Sometimes it's hard to let people in a group Though, if they have a blank profile, because it's totally private, then I'm like, I hope this is a real person. But um, there's this fear. I had that fear. I had fears that he wasn't going to pay the business that we had. I had fears around, um, yeah, being, I, in the beginning, I was getting these harassing messages about don't use the word narcissist because people are going to think it's about me. And there, we have this fear around what they're going to do and how they're going to retaliate. And what I've realized over time is they're actually weak inside. And I don't think they're really capable of doing the things they say they're going to do, making the threats they're going to make. It's their own fear. They've got their own fear going on, their own anxiety going on. And of course, which is why we pick up on that fear and anxiety right? It's like energy, you know, we feel it from them as well. So they're having their own fear and anxiety and we're feeling it from them. And so I think in the end, there's no, there's nothing to really fear. It's like part of what I do when I work with women is deconstructing fear, which is again, insidious and it keeps us from living our life and living authentically, you know, is the narcissist really going to come after us? Are they going to sue us? Are they going to do this and that or whatever it is they say? I don't think so. I think that they've got so much crap going on within themselves. They're on, they're on their own emotional roller coaster. Sharing this mug with you, it says a dream come true. That's what I focus on, creating my dream, which is not with narcissists. I'm remarried now. I'm happy now. My life is peaceful and quiet. <coughs> I do have a little frog in my throat, though. Um, recognizing the tendencies moving forward is a good thing, somebody said. Um, breaking and healing the trauma bond, improving self-esteem. Loving ourselves freely. I love that word free. It's one of my, um, probably my top core value, which is another thing I help women with. What's your core value? Um, trust issues. Yes, it can be hard to trust, obviously, when we've been through this, when we've, you know, but we have to come down to loving ourselves and trusting us right because we ultimately it's our decision when we have the boundaries and when we have that self-love and belief in ourselves and then we can trust our choices we know we're going to make the right choice when we're strong within ourselves we need to get our strength back we need to build our self-worth um Boundaries, managing empathy. Yeah, um, as empaths, we can really get caught up in being a people pleaser because we want to help. We want others to feel better so we can feel better. So managing our empathy means, <coughs> excuse me, having boundaries, right, and not people pleasing we can be kind, we can be helpful, we can be loving, but we don't want to be a doormat. That's the key, is not being a doormat. I laugh because I've been there a few times. Um, 
rumination that word comes up a lot ruminating thinking about it questioning ourselves it all goes back to perhaps not trusting ourselves our self-esteem being broken down um which co also comes from all the gaslighting you know i found myself fighting for my self-worth and really trying to stand in my power but it's hard with the trauma bond isn't it um healing and moving on with my life stop obsessing over the awful treatment and so i want to validate that i want to say yes it was awful it was terrible it was horrible um but that's why i come in here and i'm doing these meditations to help heal because it's when we go deep and we visualize, we can visualize, you know, the waterfall rushing over us to let go because we do need to let go. We need to let go of the trauma bond. We need to let go of the rumination. We need to let go of obsessing over them. Um, oh my gosh, it was used here twice in a row, obsessing. Ruminating, blaming myself, etc. Doesn't make any sense because I don't love him or who he is. And I never go back. Yet I'm stuck missing the person I thought he was. That is the shocking part. It's a shock. It's a grief. We have to work through um, missing someone who didn't really exist. Well, maybe it exists somewhere in the universe, but... They really put on a, a great show, didn't they? And it's okay to go through that. It's okay to feel sad. It's okay to maybe not expect yourself to be perfect and to be perfectly over this person. Um, you know, give yourself a little time to release that um, rumination. But anyway, tomorrow, and I'm going to add that. I need to add that link. I will be adding that link to the comments for tomorrow's event. And I would also like to hear what time so I know. I put in two times again just to kind of hit the two time zones. I probably won't do that in the future and just consolidate it into one because I don't know who's coming when. Um, having a really hard time. If you're having a hard time, it's normal. It's normal to feel that way. It's not an easy thing. The reason why I'm here doing this work is because I just thought it was the most absurd, horrible, hard, difficult thing. And I've been through a lot of losses in my life. So know that, yes, it is a hard thing to go through. Um, learning to move on. Yes, we have to learn to move on. Somebody said, grieving the loss of the relationship. I should be glad it ended, but finding myself ruminating and missing him. Um, my friends are weary about someone whom I allowed to treat me so badly for so many years. Yes, and if you were your own best friend, what would you say to yourself? I mean, really, if you could just close your eyes and visualize, that would be a good meditation for today, actually. Your own best friend. How would you treat yourself and what would you say? I think I'm going to dive into that. Um... Hoping to move out of victim mentality, gaining a broader, broader support system, PTSD, fight or flight responses. I hear that and I hear you. I understand. And feeling the anger, which again is part of the depression. So if you do go back through either in here or on my YouTube channel, which is at Clearly Blissful, um, you can find some other videos in there, some other meditations. 
Um, still thinking about my ex. Somebody said their narc was a therapist, so was mine. That makes it even worse, doesn't it? I don't know. Nobody's got it any worse than anybody else, so I just want to clarify that. Really, I mean, some women have been in really long marriages. Um, some of us have been married to people who were not married. You know, you don't have to be married. You could just be in a committed relationship. If it's a therapist and somebody you trusted and somebody who you thought was, you know, because they had initials next to their name, that that made them, uh, you know, an intelligent, knowledgeable, kind person who is supposed to be doing honest work in the world. Yeah, that's, that's a tough one. I get it. I'm feeling stuck. It's going to be normal to feel stuck, isn't it? Um, when we've been through this and we're, we don't want to stay stuck, obviously, but um, naturally we can feel that way in the beginning. And of course, before we even leave the relationship, I was pretty stuck in it, trying to believe, you know, wait for the person to come back who never really did. So I applaud you if you've left the relationship. I want to validate that. And I want to say that was awesome that you had the courage to either leave or that you're having the courage to heal now that they've left. Um, so cutting the cord, somebody said, and that's what I'm focusing on tomorrow. Um... I want to say, if you're ruminating and you feel stuck, it's time to get out of your head and into your heart. And that's what my focus is, is we get stuck ruminating in our head. It's up here. So what I help you do is to get down into your heart so you can let go and you can heal. Um, so, yes, those are a bunch of things that... I want to just skim through and validate and um, we'll be doing some more of that whatever you're feeling I want to give you the stamp of validation so that you know you're not crazy and yes this is um, what happens and all of the feelings the anger the depression the anxiety the fear uh, the trust the lack of trust so Anyway, I hope that rambling message has helped you. I hope that it's helped you to feel better to know that you're not alone. And if you're here in the Facebook group, because this will be going also on my YouTube channel, um, I just want to welcome you and thank you for joining us and send you lots, lots of love and healing vibes. Um, and let's Let's move forward on this journey and let's begin once again with a nice relaxing meditation. Um, even for those who are new here, if you think, well, I can't meditate, I can't relax, I'm ruminating, ruminating, should I say that? Ruminating? <laughs> ruminating, not ruminating. Is that an actual word? I don't know. I'll have to look that up. Um, anyway. I want to guide you, and this is why it's awesome, is I can help guide you to relax and let go and get out of your head and into your heart. So wherever you are, um, whether you're inside or outside or in your car or at the office, just get comfortable with me for a few minutes and let's do a little guided meditation. Let's just take in some nice deep breaths Breathing in positive, loving energy and breathing out any tension and any stress. And just, if you can, breathe in through your nose and breathe out through your mouth. And just allow yourself to let go. It feels so good to just let go. 
Just keep breathing in and letting it out. And just relaxing and sinking down wherever you're sitting. And just imagine that there's a cord, whatever color is your favorite color that goes from the base of your spine down into the earth, kind of like the roots of a tree. Like you're sinking down and grounding into the earth, feeling part of Mother Nature and the earth as you relax and let go. And I'd like you to imagine and just pretend if you need to that you're sitting in a place that's your perfect spot. It might be at the beach. It might be in a garden. It could be in a meadow. You might be under a tree. Imagine that place that's so relaxing and perfect for you. And the sun is just kind of dappling down. It might be coming through the leaves of the trees. And the temperature is just the way you like it. It's perfect. It's a beautiful day. The colors are awesome wherever you are. There may be plants around that you love, animals that you love, whatever is comforting for you. And just imagine that golden, warm, healing white light from the sun coming down on the top of your head and going all the way down around your head and into your neck, into your shoulders, down your arms, through your elbows, your biceps, your forearms, all the way down your hands. That healing golden white light is going through every cell in your body with its healing energy, releasing things that have been bothering you, things that are weighing on you, just allowing yourself to relax and let go. It feels so good to just let go. And that golden white healing light is going down into your chest, down into your abdomen, going all around into your organs, helping you to relieve any tension. If your stomach's in a knot, just let it go. And that golden white healing light is also going down, starting with your upper back, down your spine, through your muscles and all your vertebrae and nerves, down into your lower back, helping you to relax. Also, it's going down into your pelvis, that healing golden white, soothing light is going down into your thighs and your knees, relaxing and healing the knees if you're having any stiffness or pain there. And imagine it going down through your calves and through your feet and out your toes. And just relax there. And as you relax there, feeling soothed from the top of your head to the tips of your toes, I'd like to, you to imagine that there's another you that's appearing before you. Maybe sitting in a chair, or sitting on sand, or sitting in the grass. But they're sitting there next to you or in front of you. It's you, but it's the empowered version of you. It's the confident version of you. It's your best friend inside of you, your own best friend. And they're feeling so aligned in life and so much in their power. And even though they contain the, the kind, thoughtful part of you, they also 
have that strength to stand for themselves and who they are and really love themselves on every level of their being. And I would like you to imagine asking them a question. Ask them a question about your current situation. What's been bothering you? What it is that you might be ruminating about? So imagine asking them that question. And what advice do they have for you? I want you to take a moment to let them speak. And hear their words of wisdom, the loving words of wisdom, the kindness that they have for you. And whatever it is they say, I'd like you to remember it so that after this meditation, you can take notes and write it all down. So just I'm going to give you a moment of silence and you can ask whatever questions you want and retain the answers in your memory of what they're telling you and what they're advising you. and ask them another question, any other question that you need clarity on, knowing that within you, you actually have the answers. You actually have the answers within you, but you may not trust yourself or believe in yourself enough. So I want you to imagine that your own best friend is giving you those answers. What are they trying to tell you? So hopefully you're getting some awesome, confident answers, the ones you really need to hear that are going to help you in your life to not stay stuck and ruminating. And I want you to also know that when you lay in bed at night or whenever you're relaxing, maybe in the evening, that you can come back and you can visualize asking your best friend, which is you, on the inside that you maybe not be listening to, to actually close your eyes and take a deep breath and go back to this place and imagine asking them whatever you need to know and write it down, put it in your journal. This is something you can do in the morning. This is something you can do at night. I actually love to start my day with a little meditating to center myself, to get out of my head and into my heart and get some clarity for my day. Because if we stay stuck in our head too much, and believe me, I've been the queen of being stuck. We just spin too much and we don't get the right answers for us. 
So I'd like you and your imagination to wrap up this conversation with your own best friend. Thank them for all the amazing advice, knowing that you can remember this advice so that you're able to jot it down afterwards. And we're going to slowly come back from that beautiful place as I count from one to five. One, feeling returning to your arms and legs. Two, all energies in perfect balance, etheric body clothes. Three, eyes feeling as though they've been bathed in cool, clear water, able to see all the things you need to see. Four, feeling more confident, more in control. Things that used to bother you in the past have been released, remo removed, and resolved. And five, coming back, feeling refreshed, opening your eyes, having a little stretch. To get the body moving. So I hope you enjoy that little visualization. And again, it's something that would be good to start the day with or any time of day to get some clarity. Because the truth is that our soul, our being, our wisdom, we know the answers. But a lot of times we just don't try it. And it's not surprising when we've been through a relationship with a narcissist. So, if you would like help with this, do message me. Um, if you want to help, if you want help with healing the trauma bond, getting clarity on your direction, moving past your fears, standing in your power, the list is almost endless of what we work on to help you move forward and create your authentic life, do message me and let's schedule a call and talk about where you are, where you want to go, and if working together is the right fit. I am going to be increasing my rate soon because I'm going to be doing less one-to-one -one work. So do message me and jump on that. And also I'm posting the link for tomorrow's Breaking the Trauma Bond event. So do sign up for that. Make sure you're on that one. So anyway, thanks for joining me. Feel free to comment and ask questions in the comments. Ask questions in the comments. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please like and subscribe as well. Would love to have you watching my other videos and so you can heal and move on. So thanks for joining me and I'll see you again soon and hopefully for tomorrow's event. Bye for now.